Monday, Monday, Monday on the fan and CBS Sports Network across the country. It is Boomer and Geo. G is on his way back from Nashville, so we'll sit in until 10 o'clock. And we've got lots and lots and lots to do because it's a Monday after a busy weekend. We've got, yes, the Nets to talk about, and we will because it's not just about basketball. What? It's about New York City. We've got the Knicks to talk about why they suck. I get it. But you had quite a performance the other night by R.J. Barrett. They played the New Look Sixers on Sunday. Uh, oh, I've got thoughts about that piece of garbage, James Harden, too, which we will get to. And baseball, where are they at? Nowhere. We'll get to that coming up later in the hour as well. Mm-hmm. Right now, and the Rangers lost last night, the eventual Stanley Cup champion, but a little bit of a skid, but that's okay. Good morning, Boomer Esaias, and how are you? Yeah, I am not happy this morning, Jerry. Man, it's it. a tough weekend for the Rangers, you know. And, uh, two in a row. Yes, uh, two in a row for sure, and this is like the meat of their schedule, and it's going to get tough and tougher and tougher and tougher, yeah. and you wonder whether or not any of it is, uh, well, look, they played well in, in Pittsburgh on on. On Saturday, and, you know, Sidney Crosby falls to the ice. Next thing you know, it's a penalty. And then, of course, you know, Igor Shesterkin, a Russian goalie, plays well. And the last two goals he gives up, one to Ovechkin, the other one to Malkin, two other Russian players. It's kind of interesting with everything that's going on in the world these days. But anyway, I digress. You know, I had a weird uh, weird weekend. So I had I went to Omaha this weekend. You did? Yes, I did. Look at you. Yeah, Somewhere so in middle Omaha. America. Right, exactly. It was like 10 degrees out there. So I was walking around Old Town. I think it's called Old Old Town, or I forget what it's called, you know. And I was really considering, like, you know, getting a tattoo. And I was wondering, I was wondering, like, because there's a million tattoo places. Yeah, there's coffee shops. You don't have any, correct? No, I don't don't have any. But I was like, here I am walking around Omaha by myself, just kind of walking up and down the streets. Great coffee shops, a lot of restaurants, a lot of town feel. Yeah, you know, and I can understand why they have the College World Series there. I mean, it's actually pretty nice. Yeah, I've never it's not been. Bad. No, I mean, it's not bad at all. I mean, you've never been. You've been to Lincoln. I've been to Lincoln. Yes. Yeah, so I, I ended up in Lincoln on Saturday night. But, okay. But uh, when I got there on Saturday, you know, I was walking around. I, yeah, I was just thinking about getting a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> but you didn't get one. I, I was, you know, I just like kind of walked in, seriously considered it. And, I, you know, they have all these designs on the walls. I'm like, there's nothing there that, you know, interests me or anything. And then I asked the person, you know, what about the names of my grandchildren. It's a good something idea. like that. That could have been kind of cool, right? It would have been cool. Yeah, I didn't do it. I check it out. Cross your back? You yeah, I didn't know. I, then I was trying to figure out if I did this, where would I put it? On your back. Yeah, on my Not back. Not the tram stamp that they call it, but I mean on your back, like your shoulder blade up there, something like that. Nah. I, well, then your arm. Know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, or maybe over my heart like or something like that. You legit went in with the idea to do it and then I just did, decided yeah. not nice, to. It was nice. You know, the guy had no idea who you know who I was or anything like that. He didn't care. He was just trying to talk me through the whole thing. And then then when he said it was going to take about, like, you know, three hours. Well, Spike got one the other day that said it took him eight hours. Well, this is why I brought this up. Unbelievable. Like, I think I was when I saw this thing on when Al, said, Al actually sent it to us. So I don't know where Al got it from. Instagram, Twitter, he posted it. Oh, that's what he did. Maybe right. it was, so was, was it 10 gone. hours or 8? It was a long, long sitting. time, yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, so maybe that was the impetus for me to even think about that's that. That's where the seed was planted? It might have been. It might have been, but I you know, I don't know. And then when the person told me it was like going to be like 3 to 4 hours depending. Sure. And I was like, I, I you know, I, I can't Well, but I think for just the name it wouldn't have been hours. though. I don't think so cuz even Allie, our makeup artist who is hey, she's got a few tattoos. There have been some she says she's in and out in a half hour. It depends on what you're getting and how detailed it is. I think oh, I wasn't going to go names... in there. I, yeah, I wasn't going to go in there and get something that wasn't detailed. I mean, you know, just in case. But I, again, when he said like, what you, what I think you want done is going to probably be three, three to four hours, and I was like, ah, I don't have three or four hours. It's a long time. Yeah, so I, I kind of you know just left and went and had a few beers, and, and here you are, and here I am, man. And it was great because I went to a, a, t- a dinner for a thing called Team Jack Foundation. And you guys will remember this. Do you remember back about nine years ago, there was a spring game at the University of Nebraska. And they handed a little kid a ball. And they had him run for a touchdown during their spring game. Okay. Uh, and the vaguely, whole place yes. went crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, ESPN gave that, you know, when they have their, their own award show, they gave that, uh, that video the award of the year, the video of the year, because it was so uh, – it was just so emotional and everything. So this was tied to that, you know, and Rex Burkhead was a player at the University of Nebraska and has kind of taken up this cause for uh, pediatric brain cancer. And uh, I'm, 
it's, I'm happy to report that the young man, Jack Hoffman, who was the one that was running with the ball uh, during that spring game, is, is came through everything. Oh, that's great. Through all the surgeries and everything else, is actually playing football himself Come now on, as a really? 16-year-old, which is amazing. Unfortunately, however, there are other stories and many other stories of kids who haven't made it. And when you go to a dinner like this and you see those stories and you realize what the Hoffman family has done out there, and unfortunately, Jack's dad passed away last year to cancer, which is just like the most, unf- I mean, just the it's cruel, just a really, really sad story. So you go to this event, and it's over 800 people at this event. I mean, it was packed at the Cornhusker Hotel. That's where we stay. Is that where you stay? Yes, we <laughs> stayed at the yes. Cornhusker Hotel. Yeah, I've been there out there before because <laughs> Dave Remington, you know, of course, who works for me. Yeah. And we've had a number of fundraisers out there. So I've been out there. I just haven't been out there for about 10 years. And I cannot believe that uh, that basketball facility, the University oh, of beautiful. Nebraska building. Uh, that building is one of my favorites in the Big Ten. And their are Pinnacle Arena yes. is gorgeous. How many people does that hold? I want to say 16,000. Uh, and they is. sell out. Dude, this, this there's place nothing else to do. Yeah, I know there's nothing else to do. I mean, I understand But that. it's awesome. It I really mean, you're is. Mi- you're in the middle of the flatlands. 100%. Man. Absolutely. And there's nothing around except for Nebraska sports. And it was 10 degrees and the yeah. wind chill was like zero. Yeah. I was just there about a month ago and the place was full. And Nebraska's had a terrible season. Uh, and yet they still show up and they're there. And uh, it's, yeah, they it's love a great their building. Huskers. There's no question about that. It was great to see, you know, Rex Burkhead. He's still playing with the, tennis, uh, the Texans, I think, the Houston Texans. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, was an unbelievable night. Really, it really. It really was. I mean, so these, I, you know, I've been to hundreds of these types of dinners, but this one in particular because of the stories behind not only Jack, but then Jack's dad, Andy, passing away. And then, of course, the other kids that were there that are still struggling with brain cancer, pediatric brain cancer. And I didn't realize that they have a very, uh, they have a, a large in- incidence of this disease out there in mm. Nebraska for some reason. Um, but it is just, uh, it was very moving, and I appreciate the opportunity to be out there and speak. Well, while you were out there, I can't imagine you got to see much of what happened this weekend, at least in terms of sitting down and watching every play. I'm going to take a nice positive um, – I'm going to have a positive take here on you, Knicks, for a second. Just Why? for one second. Just Why? Because there's a lot of crap to get to, and that's Major League mm-hmm. Baseball. That is this mandate stuff with, with what's going on here in New York City, the Nets thing, and Kyrie Irving. We'll get to that in a second. Can, but I, just, can I just say one thing about the yeah. Nets? They don't have a big man. I understand. And, and they don't have a point guard. I understand. And it's kind of been like this I get way it. for 20 years. But I would like to just for a moment, and I know mm-hmm. I'm not the Nick fan in the room. I get it. But they're at least were in two losses to the Heat and the Sixers over the weekend, both games of which I watched almost all of. Um, I saw things that at least if you're a Nick fan, while they have mm-hmm. major issues, and they start at the top, and we know that with Leon Rose and your guy, mm-hmm. World Wide West and all that, and all the moves <laughs> that were made in the offseason yeah. that have not worked. Well, you know what I mean. And Nick fans, um, you know, front office. Here's what I saw this weekend, that if you want some promise and hope you would take from it is that R.J. Barrett has gotten better and better. And he has, from the day he's been drafted, R.J. Barrett has become a better player, and he's got the desire and the will, and he went for the 46 on Friday. Now, I get it. They lost to the Heat. I understand all that. But what I've seen out of R.J. Barrett since he's come back from the injury is a different, more aggressive player, and one that I really do believe can become a superstar in this league. Number two, watching yesterday... And the whole James Harden thing makes me sick, but that's besides the point. And the whole and 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 now now you're finally coming around to me. Well, for sure. Here's the other thing too: is you can't in this day and age (laughs) of of you know our attention spans are so atrocious. Mm -hmm. You have any idea? And I'm assuming you didn't watch this crap yesterday. You have any idea how many free throws were shot in this game yesterday between uh, the Knicks and the Sixers? I, I want to say like 46. 77. Yeah, it's unbelievable. 77 free throws. Joel Embiid went to the line 27 times. The game took three hours, and it was atrocious. And here's the other part, too, if you're the NBA. You can't have guys like Mitchell Robinson and Jericho Sims <laughs> foul out in 17 and 18 minutes, respectively. You've got to let them play a little Jimmy, bit more. This is this but, all- but this, I, like I told you, this is a problem with the Knicks. That position is a huge I understand. problem with the Knicks. But, about- the, but, it, but in this case, I don't blame that. You've got a guy in Joel Embiid who is a mountain of a man. He is the one initiating contact on every play. He gets the ball shoulder, Puts his shoulder down. down. Yes, you have to let you, change the rules. You got to let the guys play defense and be a little bit physical on him if he's initiating the contact. For him to go to the line yesterday 27 times is a disgrace. But do you know who else does that and un- unfortunately gets the calls against him is Julius Randle. 
Julius Randle does the same thing. He gets it's, the ball. Now, a, he's not nearly as big as Joel Embiid. It's but a bad brand of basketball. No, I know it is. It's you terrible. can't watch but it. Here's the other thing, too. The Knicks, there are about seven Joel Embiid's in the league. Maybe maybe eight, mm. if I really think about it. Like, you know, you have Anthony Davis. You have Embiid. You have Giannis. I would say that, you know, Kevin Durant, because he's seven foot, is around, is, is like that, but he plays Jokic. differently. Jokic, yes. So, I, I, I'm telling you, it's about eight or nine of these guys in the league. And the Knicks don't have one, and we've never had one. The last guy we had that was even remotely close to anything like this was Patrick Ewing. We, we, we just don't have a guy like that. I understand. And then, of course, you know, when James Harden decides to play and decides to really give effort and decides to be the James Harden he's supposed to be, then all of a sudden you see exactly what the Knicks also don't have. And that is a guy who can control the game by holding onto the ball and not throwing it away and not throwing it into the first row of the stands. And, and this is why, you know, the Knicks are always going to be stuck in neutral. Now, I, I will agree with you regarding R.J. Barrett. I think we all love R.J. Barrett. We all think that he's a terrific guy. But, you know, he's also a player that's a wing player. You know, we don't have a point player, and we don't have a big man. He's a slasher. I mean, and he's exciting to watch. Love him. Love him to death, man. And I think he's only going to get better. Believe it or not, he's only going to get better. Shooting will get better. And, you know, it's great when you see a young player really start to mature. And, you know, when you listen to him after games, he's great. He's absolutely great. He is not affected by any of the other nonsense that's going on around him. And, you know, this is why I I think you got to get rid of Julius Randle this offseason now. And you got to let this team be R.J. Barrett's team. And you got to look. I, I want to see the young kids play. I really do. And I know with that, it's that was going my to, second part. And then with that, they're going to lose. I I also know that now. But I'll tell you this though. Yes, they'll probably lose more than they're going to win for sure. Well, they're one and nine in their last ten. But watch it. Yeah, but you know what? I, the score to me yesterday was not indicative of this game. Well, because it was it was like what ninety five ninety five there. Well, they a had point. a lead late. I mean, yeah, this no. game, and then all of a sudden, Philadelphia. The last two minutes was a complete mishmash of crap and turnovers, but they they hung with Philly the entire game. And the Garden, while, yeah, there were a ton of Sixer fans there, the Nick fan was also loud and into it. And you know why they were loud and into it? Because you saw R.J. Barrett, you saw Obi Toppin, you saw Emmanuel quickly, you saw Cam Reddit, you saw all playing, these young guys. The kids. And I at least see, again, maybe I'm blind, that's fine, but I see a little bit of a baseline of what they can be. Now, they need pieces and they need a star. I'm not saying they don't. But at least you have something here that you can work with going forward. The question is, is Tibbs the coach that can take this group to the next level? And I don't know that he can. If you get rid of the older players, you can. How do you get rid of Julius Randle? I I don't know. You just got That's up to Leon Rose. Is he still around? He is. He doesn't speak, but he is still around. That's up to Leon Rose to figure out in the offseason now because we're past the, the trade deadline and all this other stuff. And they'll have to get rid of Fournier, too. And, and they'll, you know, Kemba Walker, you know, he's got one year left in his deal. It's probably easy to trade that. But, you know, they just got to hand it over to the young guys. And, and, and you hope that each of these young guys grow, much like R.J. Barrett has grown right in front of our faces. And, you know, and given all that we talked about, what, three years ago when it was Zion Williamson, Zion Williamson, Zion Williamson. Uh, John Morant's a great player. Great player. And he is going to be an awesome, awesome player point guard for years and years and years to come i would much rather have that than have rj because of the position and the importance of the position but we got rj and it's turned out that he's probably you know right there at the top of that draft class with his explosiveness with the way that he slashes the shooting ability uh the way to get to the free throw line there's a lot of things to like about him plus he really does try to play defense. And he cares. That's all, it's almost impossible to play defense on James Harden, but especially a motivated James Harden. And this brings me back to the problem that I have with the Nets throughout all of this. Okay. Is that, you know, he is a reflection of all the, the crap that the Nets have been through for three years. And when you think about what, the way he was when he first got here, was what we see Correct. yesterday. And this is where he, anytime he goes somewhere for the first time, this is what he is. Right. Yeah, but great then, player. And then he mailed it in. Yep. Then he mailed it in. And, I, and I'll tell you who uh, who sensed that. And, and he hasn't said it and probably will never say it. Maybe when it's all over, said and done with. And, you know, they're on some podcast and they're drinking and smoking. Maybe they'll be able to say whatever they want to say. But, you know, Kevin Durant probably looked at this and said, man, this guy. Well, I think you saw that guy. for that all-star game draft. He didn't want him. Right. And Something. the way he actually reacted with that was kind of like, See ya. Get out. And it'll be fascinating. I think it's March 10th there in Philadelphia if Durant is back. I think he will be by then because I feel like it's like we're on a wait and see. There was a possibility he could have played Saturday. And they had a great game Saturday night against Milwaukee without him. 
Uh, but I think he'll be back in time for that. It'll be, it'll be fun, especially if these two teams mix it up in the postseason, which they could. It certainly could happen. Um, but, yeah, that was uh, – And, by the way, there is good news that on was the Harden. front for you because March 7th, uh, this mandate is going to get knocked down, and it looks like uh, Kyrie Irving is going to be able to play. No, actually he's not. Really? No. So, let's get – I want to get into that because they're, they're, I am beyond confused. There's a private mandate. That will still not allow him a to play. Private mandate. Yes. Yeah, so the story. Who, who put the man? Uh, All right, so let's do this real quick. And I know we got CeeLo coming up. Yes. So it comes out yesterday that given the low numbers and the direction things are trending in, that the mandate will be rolled back. For indoor March dining, 7. fitness. Well, fitness isn't basketball fitness. Here's a good, well, here's the good news, Boomer. Right. On March 7th, Kyrie Irving will be allowed to go to Barclays Center and watch the Nets play. He'll be able to watch them play, but he can't still play. Still not allowed to play, though. And why is he not allowed to play? What's the private what's the reason man? For it? I don't know. I wrote it down. I don't know what the hell I'm reading. Um, there's a private sector mandate that's not covered by this proclamation that would still prohibit him from playing so at Barclays Center. I, I, again, the geniuses that what are, are we running doing? This, the city are basically making rules for some people, not other Correct. people. So now he'll be able to actually go to Barclays Center and watch unvaccinated players from other cities come in and play on his home floor. He can watch. And he can be around other people, and everything's fine, but he can't play. But he can practice with them, but he can't play. It makes no sense. And, and who, but, who else falls into this category? Have you thought of anybody else who falls into this category? Uh, whoever's not vaccinated in New York. I don't I don't know. No, I haven't thought about it, to be quite honest. He's the he's the face of it So right he, now. <clears throat> he can now go to a restaurant. Yes. They're removing the mask mandate this week. Right. No mask. He can go. He eat. can still practice with his team. Yes, correct. Um, he could travel with his he team. He can go to the garden and watch a concert if he wants. He can go to a concert, but he just can't play basketball. As he's not allowed. You know, all right, so, again, you know, I do fall on the side of Kyrie. I know on you all do. This, yeah. But what I don't fall on is the the idiocy that comes out of City Hall when it comes to making decisions as to who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, who can go to work, who can't go to work, mandating this, mandating that, and, you know, and just being all over the place and being a complete, utter – S show yeah. when it comes to trying to make everybody understand what we're doing. I mean, like, you, I, I was assuming that he was going to be allowed to play. That's what everybody thought. And then Shams Charania uh, tweeted out this little footnote, if you will. Now, what about the whole fine thing? Can so that's all right, so now, now, this, too? now this is what Al and I were talking about on the warm-up show, five mm-hmm. to six, Monday through Friday. Yeah, okay. Um, so before we talked about the Nets paying the fine, and then we found out that they cannot pay the fine by NBA rules because they have to follow the city mandates. This is a private sector mandate now, not a city mandate. My guess is they could pay the fines now. And if that's the case, one article actually totaled it up. It would cost the Nets if for, for I think they've got 13 home, or 12 or 13 home games left. Plus the and then if you max out the playoffs, every possible playoff game they could play, it would cost either him or the team or whoever pays for it one hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars. Yeah, pay the fine. Well, what I just want to, I, what I really want to know is like, well, how do you pick and choose the people? That, I don't that know. You mandate. I mean, I don't understand any meetings. of this. I, I don't know. I really don't. And why all of a sudden you can be a part of it but not be in it? Like, how does that make sense? It really doesn't. So he can go to the game, but he just can't play. Can he sit on the bench? Um, see, one article said that he could sit on the bench. Another said he could sit in the stands. Right behind the bench. Right behind the bench. It's so stupid. And he can practice with them. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I know that. So if he's allowed to practice with them. Can he practice with them? Why can't he play them? with them? Can he practice with them in the Barkley Center? Well, their facility, I believe, is attached to Barkley Center. But I'm saying, but on the in, Barkley actually, Center floor, at the, on the Barkley Center floor, can he go out there pregame think, and I, shoot hmm. and, and shoot around? That's a good question See, because not for nothing. So let me ask you this: Isn't practice part of his job? Yes. So why is the game just not another part of his job? I, it's, I, I don't know, man. I, I have and no can't idea. you sue someone? I don't someone? know. I have no idea what. Well, the previous mayor was a buffoon. Uh, that, right. uh, this guy seems to have a little bit of better sense and a more practical sense of what's going on around here. But I just don't understand between him and city council and the doctors and everybody else how you could just be so selective in what you're doing and, and not explain as to why it's this way. Don't I, haven't, I, haven't, I, I just assume that all the mandates are being lifted. Kyrie's going to be back and, and Kyrie's going to win. Meanwhile, you fired all these people that didn't take the shot. And uh, you have all these other people who ended up did taking the shot who didn't want to take the shot to save their jobs. Yeah. 
I, which is hum, which is like mind numbing. The only answer to this, to your question, is that this was from Ballsack Sports, and we got it wrong. But I don't think that's the case. No, I don't think it's from Ballsack. Sports. I don't think so. So <laughs> no, let's take a break. We're uh, running late just to get started here. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. We have a lot to do. I haven't even touched on the baseball yet, which we will coming up either later this hour or next hour because that's a mess as well. We've got a lot of football to get to. Believe it or not, on a Monday in February, and CeeLo next on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. <laughs> 